In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can use old toothbrushes like these to create beautiful, complex, textured areas in your watercolors. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle, and on this channel, you'll find watercolor videos like this one, as well as drawing videos, color mixing, mixed media, even a little bit of business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube and subscribing is free. Now, if you're painting with oils, acrylics, or gouache, you might be leaving textured marks with your brushes in order to make a textured area. Doesn't really work very well with watercolors. If you do leave uh, brush marks, it tends to look pretty awful, as you may have discovered. So I'm gonna give you a 10-step process today, and we're going to make a beautiful textured area. We're going to be using an old toothbrush or two. We're going to be using a bit of masking fluid, paint, and of course, an ordinary paintbrush. I'm gonna give you this process of layering and layering and layering until you get this beautiful, complex, textured area. Now, what can you use this for? You can use this for all sorts of things. You can use it if you're painting a forest pathway that's got lots of leaf litter on. You can use it for areas of gravel or concrete. You can also use it for beaches, fabric, all sorts of things. And although I'm giving you a 10 step process to follow, you can of course go off piste and you can make your own process up. In other words, you can do less steps, you can do more steps. All depends on the sort of surface that you're looking for. You'll want to vary the type of marks you make and of course the colors that you use in order to get the results that you want. But I'm giving you an outline here. So it's really, really easy. You don't need any painting skills whatsoever to achieve this. And if you've ever looked at this sort of large expanse of area, a beach, a pathway, something like that, and you're just not sure how to approach it, this is going to be a big help to you. Before we start, I do have to say that I am letting the paint, the masking fluid, whatever I'm using, I'm letting it dry thoroughly between each layer. So don't be fooled by the editing process whereby you see me tell you to leave something dry and then go straight into the next step. You yourself will need to wait quite a while. I actually filmed this video over an entire day because if you apply masking fluid to damp paper, it is going to tear. So do make sure everything's dry in between each step. So it requires a little bit of patience, but almost no skill whatsoever. What could be better than that? So let's get started with step one. So before we put our first layer on, we need to decide about the edges of the area we're working in. Is it a hard edge shape such as you might find up against a wall? Do you want a soft area that just sort of blends outwards such as you might find on the edges of a pathway through the forest where you wouldn't want any hard edges? Or do you want perhaps a ragged outline? I'm gonna show you first of all the three steps for achieving this. So let's talk about the area in which you might want to place your texture. So I'm just gonna pull in briefly a very large painting I'm working on. So you can just see the foreground. So this is a garden painting. And here at the front, you can see I've got these areas and these areas, they're not dirt, they actually have bark in. So you can see the edge is kind of rough. It's gonna be, you know, a rough edge. So let's have a think about edges. This is just cartridge paper and I'm gonna draw with a ballpoint pen simply because so many of you told me that you have trouble seeing in pencil. And then after that, I'll show you how we're gonna paint these edges. So imagine some scenarios. So we might have perhaps um, a sea wall here and we might be sort of looking through it. So here's our wall. Not sure that would stand up to a battering, but anyway, you can see what I mean. And through here, maybe down some steps, we've got some beach. Now you can see that I've got very straight, hard edges here. So this area here, and we'll imagine just for the sake of it that there's something else in the distance here, another barrier of some kind. So this area here where we're gonna put our texture has got hard, straight edges. Now the one I showed you just now on the picture that I'm working on, that was sort of a flower bed. So if we imagine a garden and perhaps we've got, you know, a pathway, and then we've got areas where there are flower beds. And what we're gonna have here is we've got dirt and things and there's gonna be stones and things. So what we've got here, it's still fairly straight, but we've got a bumpy edge. So that's another type of edge we could do. But the one I most often do is the one that you might find if you were looking, um, say down a woodland pathway. So again, you know, we might have a pathway going into the distance and we might have some trees and maybe some things growing down the edges of the pathway. 
bushes, plants, anything like that. And so here's our area of pathway and we need to put texture in here. But the last thing we want is to have some kind of sharp edge here because we've got all sorts of things here. We've got, you know, stones coming over and bits of mud and plants growing. And if we leave a hard edge around here, however light the, uh, the colours are, it's going to show through. It's going to notice because watercolour is transparent. So in this case, what I do is a faded edge. So it allows me to take all the colour and texture here and just fade it out at the edges. Now, this is the one I'm going to actually show you in my larger demonstration today because it's the one you'll come across most often. But first, let me show you how to do each of these. So if we want to start our area with hard edges, then what we're going to do, of course, is just apply our paint like this. I assume as well that you will have drawn some kind of template. You will have drawn the edges first. You'll just be able to paint up to the edges like that. Now, if you're not good at painting up to straight edges and you want something even sharper than this, then I do recommend this. It's a scotch tape, sometimes called magic tape. You can get it in stationers. This will reserve a straight edged area. The paint will not go underneath the tape and it'll come off without tearing your paper. Let's look at the next one where we just need a bit of a, a bumpy edge. Now we could just use the paintbrush like this. You still tend to get something that looks rather forced. Another option is to use masking tape. So I'm going to take a piece of masking tape. I'm going to stick it onto my clothing a few times so that it picks up some lint. That will stop it from being overly sticky and tearing my paper. And then what I'll do is I'll tear this tape. Now masking tape is not good at keeping paint off of an area. It's certainly not as good as scotch tape, but if you want a bit of a ragged edge, it's fantastic because the paint will seep underneath a little bit. So we put our ragged edge here and I can paint up to it like so. I'd usually allow it to completely dry, but I'll take it off a bit sooner just so you can see the effect. And look at this, we have a really ragged, really natural looking edge. Fantastic if you're looking to get the edge of an area of dirt or something similar. Lastly, we have our faded edge. Now I'll be using this for my main example because there are other stages you need to go through with this when you're doing splattering. But for the first part, all we're going to do is make a faded edge. So if I've got a pathway, for example, and I want the sides just to disappear out into nothing, I'm going to put some clean water on. So you need to soak your paper, but without leaving puddles. And then you can use any brush for this bit. It's just going to apply your paint until it hits the edge there. And you can see what we've got here is a soft faded edge. If I want to, I can blend it even further. So that by the time we've painted this area, we don't have a distinct idea of where the edge is, which means we can put trees and plants, anything at all over these edges, and it will just naturally seamlessly blend into our landscape without there being a hard edge down the side. So now we've decided how we want the outside edge of the area to look. Let's lay down our first wash. So let's start painting our soft edged area. So I'm going to place some water around the edges. As always, when using water to get soft edges like this, make sure you put a fair width of it on the paper. Now, I would always, if I were doing a proper painting, be working on stretched paper, which would get rid of some of the buckling. I'm not going to bother doing that today, but I do suggest that if you're doing actual paintings, you do this. I've got some sepia here and some yellow just because I'm using it in my current painting. And what I'm going to do now is just pop a layer on. This is very watery paint. All we're doing at this stage is just knocking out the white and getting a very pale color on. And of course, it goes without saying that you could use any color for this. The color you choose might be different for a beach as to an area where there's some brightly colored autumn leaves or any other surface that you're using. All we need to do now is let that dry. As always, can I ask you, quickly remind you to press that like button, that thumbs up, really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. If you can like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people and I can help more people learn to paint and draw. So we're going to do our first step of splattering. We're going to be using masking fluid. If the thought of this fills you with dread, don't worry, I'm going to show you an easy way of ensuring that the masking fluid lands on the paper rather than yourself or your clothes. So my paint is dry. Don't stand things on your paint, by the way. I'm only doing this so you can see on screen. And I've got some masking fluid here, which is basically a uh, liquid rubber. And um, I'm going to pour some out. And I've got my old toothbrush here. 
And I've made a good start because you can see I've already dripped some on the paper, but that's not going to matter. So what you want to do with a toothbrush, and please don't just use your husband or wife's toothbrush, um, not unless you're looking to get a quick divorce without all that unpleasant infidelity nonsense. What you want to do is get your toothbrush. See, this one was one of those ones that had the kind of the zigzag cut into it. It's all stained up because I've had ink and all sorts of things. I'm going to dip in there. Looks like there's also some dried bits of something in it, but that'll just brush off the paper. So we're not going to worry about that. So I'm going to dip in there. And what you want to do is point the toothbrush towards the paper and you're going to bring your thumb along and pull back like this. If you have arthritis or you can't do this with your thumb, just use a blunt knife. So use the blade of the knife to draw back across the bristles front to back and you're going to point downwards. What this is going to mean is that the splatter will go downwards and land on your paper and we're going to splatter like this. I'm just going to dip into that little bit of masking fluid there and just break it up a little bit. Remember anything that's masked out can be repainted later so if you make any mess don't worry about it and we're just splattering. Now these are quite hard to see but as we put the next layer of paint on they'll become clear. Now we're going to let it dry. Now I do want you to let it dry naturally. I don't really like the use of hair dryers for drying artwork and the combination of a hair dryer with masking fluid really you know I can't condone that kind of madness. It's honestly one step away from selling all your clothes and joining a cult. So we're going to let this dry naturally before we put the next layer on. Now that our masking fluid is dry, we're going to splatter with some paint. We're going to take the paint tone a little bit darker. Now, I meant to mention in the last clip that when you finish with your masking fluid, I would dunk it straight in um, a tub of water like this, then give it a rinse under the tap. It won't stop all of it from sticking to the bristles, but it'll get some of it. So I've got a different one here, and this time we're going to splatter with some paint. So I've gone for a slightly darker colour here. I've got a bit of burnt sienna, and I'm going to put some water with this and just give it a bit of a mix like this. You'll also want a bit of tissue paper or newspaper on the side just to tap your brush off on. You don't want it dripping wet like this, so you're just gonna tap some paint off, and then we're gonna splatter. Now, we don't want a hard edge along the side, but equally, we perhaps don't want our paint to go on other objects we might have painted, like trees. So a good thing to do is to mask off with some paper. And what I like to do is tear the paper. And you can see if you tear it sort of so it's quite raggedy, then you'll end up splattering and you'll get an edge to the splatter, but it'll be quite soft. And if each time you splatter, and you can do this with the masking fluid too if you need to, each time you splatter, you know, you can move that around. Of course, if masking fluid goes on a tree or something, it'll just rub off, it won't matter. But you can, of course, mask wherever you want to. And again, I'm going to point downwards and start splattering across. So it's easier to see this, but we had the same effect with the masking fluid. What we're doing here is we're building up multiple layers. I'm going to put quite a lot of this colour on because it's the mid-tone. And again, I'm going to let it dry, but it should take less time to dry than our first layer because it's only in small speckles. I would still give it at least 15 minutes. Next up, we want another layer of masking fluid. So we're not going to remove the first one. We're just going to splatter on top. Do be careful that you don't get too much masking fluid built up in one area. You don't want to block anything out completely. And large, thick areas of masking fluid can tear your paper. So we're going to be a little bit careful as we go on top of previous layers. Now, if you've rinsed your brush, your toothbrush in water, that's okay. Just make sure you sort of dry it a little bit on a cloth before using. Surprisingly, you can actually put water in masking fluid. It's okay, but you mustn't get too much in there. Otherwise, it'll stop working. I've put a bit of fresh out because the stuff I was using before it started to dry now. So again, I'm going to dip in and just repeat the process of splattering. You won't be able to see too much at this stage but do keep the faith. And just at this stage, sticking to small marks, we're going to do some larger ones in a moment. So we're going to step up again, go in with a little bit darker paint, but we're actually going to paint with the toothbrush. You can use the same toothbrush you use for masking fluid and uh, clean it first, but I find it easier just to have a separate toothbrush. I've got quite a few. I keep some for masking fluid because it never completely comes out and some for paint. And we're going to work on top of the previous layers. So we're going to splatter a little bit for this next layer, but we're also going to actually physically paint with the toothbrush. Now, the reason for that is we want to get some bigger marks. So you want to think at this stage about perspective. You know, is this just a random pattern you're making or is it part of a landscape? So if it's part of a landscape, such as a beach or a pathway, 
then it stands to reason that if you make larger marks at the front here, which is closest to the viewer, then as it goes off into the distance, you can get smaller marks and you'll get that sense of perspective. So we're going to start thinking about that now. So I've got a little bit of, it's just a bit of neutral tint here. This one's by Jackman's. They tend to vary a lot from brand to brand. You don't want to make it, you know, don't make it jet black. Don't make it too dark. A little bit of water on the brush. And again, I'm going to splatter a bit. Really start to build up the texture now. And then as I come forward, I can. what I can do is I can get a little more paint on the toothbrush. And we can tap like this. Now be careful to tap, not to drag, because you don't want to actually scrape the paper, because what will happen then is you'll lift off that previous masking fluid that you've applied. So adding more paint, more water, and then coming forwards. Now do not worry if some of the marks look a bit unnatural, because we're going to put more layers on top. We're also going to get a chance to adjust at the end. So nothing you're doing at this stage is too much to panic about or too permanent. I'm going to come forward here. You can, of course, experiment with getting uh, more paint on the brush. You might get some larger splatters this way or using darker colours at the front. And just fading out a little bit as you go further back. And we're starting to get a lot more texture now and getting some larger marks in the foreground. Now we need to let this dry. So now that's dry, we've got one more layer of masking fluid splatter. So let's get that done quickly. So it's looking pretty good. And of course, we haven't taken the masking fluid off yet. So it's going to be even more sort of nuanced than what we've got here. So we've just got a couple of stages to go. So at this stage, I'm going to splatter again with masking fluid just a little bit. And uh, I'm going to continue that idea of getting some larger areas on the front. So I'm actually going to as well tap some of the masking fluid on. Now, what you'll notice is that when I tap both masking fluid and paint on, I'm trying to sort of go across, not in lines, but I'm just trying to keep everything a bit horizontal. You don't want any marks that end up going up the page. So if you default to going across, then as your brush sort of slips slightly, you should get marks that are flatter that way than that way. And that will give you a feeling of uh, something being horizontal. Because if you look at something like a pebble, if you're looking at it from the point of view of perspective, it will be wider than it is higher. And just again, putting those larger ones in the front. And again, I'm going to let it dry. This time we're going to splatter with paint, but we're going to add some white gouache in. So we're actually going with a lighter layer now. The reason we're adding the white is because otherwise it won't go on top of the dark areas that we've painted. So we want some light speckles now. Don't worry if you don't have any white gouache or any white watercolor. Like all of these layers, you can adjust each one. This stage is of course optional, but it's really quite fun. So I've put a little titanium white here. This is the white that you most commonly find in gouache paints. You could use zinc white. You sometimes get that in watercolors, not quite as opaque as this one. If you don't have any of this, a little tip is that certain watercolors, i.e. certain colors, are more opaque than others. Many of the cadmium yellows are quite opaque. Yellow ochre can be opaque. And best of all, Naples yellow is very opaque. So you may be able to find a color that, even though it's not a gouache, it still has a little bit of opacity to it. I'm going to mix this a bit so that it's not fully white, not pure white. Pop a little bit of water in. I could mix anything I wanted in with this, a little bit of pale blue, some yellow yellow, anything at all. I'm going to keep mine just kind of neutral, just knocking out the pure white. And I'm going to now splatter like I did before. Remember that when you do this on a painting, you'll need to mask off any areas and much bigger than this as well. I mean, go all the way out if you're wanting to preserve those areas and always use a torn edge. Now, I think actually this is looking too much like pure white. I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow in. So I've just picked up a bit of yellow from my palette. And we're going to come across like this, building up that texture. And again, just like before, I'm going to put a few larger marks in the foreground. Now you can see that even without masking fluid, this is looking pretty good. So if you don't have any masking fluid yet, then you can still have a go at this technique. But I'm going to let this dry now and take the fluid off and see what we've got. For this next stage, it needs to be bone dry because we're going to remove all of the masking fluid before we add some final touches. 
So now comes the dangerous part, not dangerous in terms of the art itself, but dangerous in terms of your fingertips, because you can remove masking fluid just from making little circles like this. But I actually saw somebody on Facebook this week who gave themselves a blood blister. And I myself have blistered my fingers sometimes when I've got large amounts of masking fluid to remove. So I suggest you use a firm eraser like this one. You can get special tools. They're really just textured pieces of plastic, all sorts of things you can use really. And we're just going to start to take this off. I'm going to come off camera for a moment and do this over a dustbin. So now we've got our results, but chances are you might want to adjust them a little bit. So we're gonna use an actual ordinary paintbrush. At this stage, you can soften things with water. You can add objects like pebbles. And if you need to go over something, again, you can mix in a little bit of white gouache and paint on top of your darks. You often find with this technique that there's just one or two areas that just look a bit odd and unnatural. So now's your chance to adjust them. Let me show you how it's done. So here's my result. You can see that all of those tiny bits of masking fluid have reserved different bits and made it all much more textured, giving tiny, tiny marks that you could never get with a paintbrush. Look at this little mark here where I dripped some masking fluid at the beginning. Looks like a sun, doesn't it? Surrounded by kind of a swarm of locusts. So what you can do at this point is you can correct any mistakes like that. You can also use some water if you want to soften. If the area that should be in the distance is looking, you know, a bit too clear, as it were, has a bit too much clarity, you can put some water over there. You can also get any marks here that are just looking a bit unnatural. And either with some water or with some paint, you can sort of make pebbles and things. So I can put just some clean water on here and just start agitating it a little bit if I want to. We add a little bit of colour to that. I can, if I want to, get actual shapes of pebbles and rocks here. I can use dark colours like this. Of course, I could go in again with some lighter pieces and use this light colour that I've mixed up here and put these in as well. Now, do remember as well the perspective that we were talking about. So you want to get these marks going smaller into the distance. You could possibly even use you know a row of pebbles sometimes i've used a row of pebbles or made something that looks like footprints going off into the distance let's put a little bit of something over that one there so it doesn't look as noticeable and what about using a little bit of clean water just to blur some of these distant areas or perhaps get some horizontal marks now be careful not to do too much of this and it all depends on the subject you're looking at, but this is your chance to make any final adjustments. So do let me know in the comments if you found this tutorial useful and what you might use these techniques for. As I said at the beginning, you can take what I've shown you and really take it off in any direction. It's such a versatile thing, and I'd love to know what you plan to use it for. Before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. As always, I've got free stuff down there for you. I've got some free downloadable PDFs. I've got a free watercolor painting course that you can take. You can also find out all about my paid courses, including my beginner's watercolor and beginner's drawing courses. They have amazing reviews and I'd love to welcome you onto one of them. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch another one of my watercolor techniques videos right now.